Samuel chapter number 12. 2 Samuel chapter number 12. Uh, and then uh, I want you also to find Genesis chapter number 13. And so 2 Samuel chapter number 12 and Genesis chapter number 13. 2 Samuel chapter number 12 and Genesis chapter number 13. Really not sure how to get into this message. Uh, if I was reading my Bible uh, last week or uh, the week before, it just felt like the Lord kind of led me in on this, and, I, and I'm just going to go ahead and preach what God's given me. Uh, and uh, really, I'm not sure how this is going to go, but I know it's going to go. Uh, and so, uh, in Second Samuel chapter number eleven, many of us are familiar with this. Some of us may not be. But it is the time when David was at home sleeping during the day and kings are out battling. People are out on the forefront of the, the battlefield. And it was a time when kings went forth to battle, the Bible says. And there's, David's supposed to be out there, but he stayed home. And the Bible says that evening time, he got up off his bed and he looked and he saw a lady. And he's on the top of his roof and he saw a lady bathing. Uh, even at time he got off his bed, which leads me to believe that he was a, a man that was sleeping through, just during the day. Men ought not be at home sleeping during the day. They ought to be working during the day unless they worked all night. And, and so he was in a place where he shouldn't have been. He was not in the right spot. He looks down. He sees a lady named Bathsheba bathing. And David gets out of control. Many of us know this story. He has his servants go get her, bring her over. David went in under her. Later on, she conceived while her husband was out on the battlefield, Uriah the Hittite. And uh, she calls David and she said, I'm with child. And David sends for Uriah to come off the field and brings him up to his house and, and tries to give Uriah a bunch of alcohol, a bunch of food, tries to get Uriah to go home and sleep with his wife. But Uriah would not go sleep with his wife. He said, Joab, my Lord, is out on the field with the men, and how could I go into my wife when they're out on the field and, they're, and, and, and I need to be out there with them? So David sends Uriah back out to Joab uh, with a letter that Uriah didn't even know the letter had sealed his fate, and the letter said to kill Uriah, to put him out on the, the hottest battle, in the forefront of the battle, and let him die uh, so that David could cover his sin up. And that's what he was trying to do. And, and, uh, uh, and David had Uriah killed. And then in chapter number 12, Nathan the prophet comes to David and gives him a little story about a rich man that uh, owned a lot. And he went to this man that did not own a lot. The man only had one little ewe lamb. He had a little lamb. And, and David, uh, Nathan told David that that man stole that lamb and took it and, and gave it to one of his friends to eat. And David said, listen, that man should surely die for that. He, he messed up, and he took what was another man's property, and he needs to die. And then Nathan points the finger at David and says, David, thou art the man. And he begins to tell David what he did, and David knew what he did. And David began to be remorseful to the Lord, and you're a, Bathsheba's got a baby now in her womb, and the baby's born, and God kills the baby. Uh, and, and takes the baby from David and Bathsheba. And, uh, and then uh, at the end of it, uh, verse number 13, chapter number 12. The Bible says that David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, and thou shalt not die. Howbeit, because by this deed, Thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. I want to concentrate on chapter or verse number 14. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. And I want to kind of talk about that a little bit tonight, and then we're going to go right into Lot's life, and I understand that we've either talked about that today, or next week, or whatever, and, and Kesley said in her school, they had just spoke about that with her teacher about Lot, and I said, well, that must be the message of the hour, because I was preaching on Lot before I heard that you were teaching on Lot, and before I heard that she was learning about Lot, and I'll tell you, messages will always be different, because God has so much for us. 
But I want to talk about how God went to the prophet and told David this. David, because of what you've done, you've given the enemies great occasion to blaspheme against the Lord. What is he saying there? David, you're making God look bad. And you've done wrong here. And we know about Lot's life and we'll get into that. But let's go ahead and pray. Uh, we'll have a song and then we'll preach to you for just a little bit tonight. Just a couple of thoughts I want to give you. And I want to, I, 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 and I entitled the message, The Loss of David and Lot. The Loss of David and Lot. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And God, I do pray that you give us liberty tonight, Lord, and pray that you'd uh, help me to say exactly what needs to be said, to do exactly what needs to be done, and Father, to convey the message that you have for us tonight. Lord, please help us, God. We need your help, Lord. We're very nervous, but we'd really like to have what you want to be said. And Father, I know that you can do it, and I pray that you'd help our church tonight. Many of us may be dealing with these issues, and many of us will deal with these issues. And God, may we not... Give the enemy great occasion to blaspheme against the Lord and make you look bad. God, help us, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing.
give you a thought tonight. Uh, you understand, as God's children, we are living a life for more than just ourselves. Uh, uh, we are a testimony unto the world of what God does and who God is and and, uh, and, 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 and and really, we just have to wonder what kind of testimony we are. If the world, if, if you were the only one to live here, what kind of testimony would you bring to the table for the Lord? As we moved our family here in 2009, uh, we had no intention of ever blending in, ever trying to be like this place, ever trying to be like the world, whether it was Arkansas or Philadelphia. And today, six years later, we still have no intentions of that. I don't ever want to be lumped in with the world. Right. I want to be God's child and to be above what God, above not above them looking down upon them because I, everything's level at the cross. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. But I want to be different. And as David was the king of Israel and God had blessed David exceedingly and, and did many things, there was a, came a time in his life when he wasn't walking with the Lord, when he wasn't where he was supposed to be, and he blew it. And by blowing it, listen to me now, God said, David, because of this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. And there have been many Christians, many people throughout the ages, and many people in the history of the Liberty Baptist Church who have went back on God and decided not to follow Jesus when they were at one time in their life strong in it and, and had convictions from the Bible and had uh, things that God was telling them to do and they were doing it and they were walking with God and then they stopped because of sin not because of the preacher hurting their feelings or patched the pirate and not because of the, the other reasons that people give me why they do not come to church anymore but because of sin they quit on the Lord, and then what they did next was horrible for their families, for their fair friends, for their fellow co-workers, the people that were around them. They gave great occasion for those people to blaspheme the Lord and to say it was not real. In misery loves company. You look, folks, people in your lives are not so much willing you to fail. But if you do, they'll be there to comfort you and say, oh, it's okay. You can always come back with us. And we can always go down to the bar house or, 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 or whatever we would used to do with our lives. And they'll take us right back in. But then those people will go straight to hell one day. Because they didn't have a strong testimony of the Lord in their life. And you are it. I mean, I'm not here to complain, and I'm not here to be worried, and I'm not worried about what the Lord's doing. And I don't care how many are left. God is in this thing, and God is still Roman, reigning supreme, and God wants to do something. And so I want you to know David totally messed up there. And he was the king of Israel, the sweet Solomon of Israel, a man that walked with God. He said, well, I'd never do it, Brother Burton. Well, David did, and if he did, you could. And, and boy, you've got to guard against that. And, and I'm just telling you, uh, my family's hope, not just KK and Dale and Kara and Mealybug, but my family's hope, the ones that aren't in church, are that I keep on keeping on. And that we keep on having a testimony. That my dad and mom keep telling my aunts and uncles how great things are going here. And, and that my folks keep, my family keep going out of my mom and dad's house and seeing that it ain't the party house no more. That's what our house was for years. My dad had ten brothers and sisters, and he was the toughest out of all of them, and he was the wildest out of all of them. And, and now my dad has slowed down many things, and, and they have devotions, and they have Bibles all through the house, and you, you can't come in drinking, you can't come in cussing, and you're not going to watch nothing crazy on the TV there. That's the hope of my family. And if my dad goes back, it's going to give the enemy a great occasion to blaspheme. Now take your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter number 12. As I read this in my Bible reading as David, all I could think about was Lot and what Lot did and what happened with Lot. And so I really want to kind of go through the life of Lot very speedily. And, and if you don't know about him, I'll give you the gist of it. Genesis chapter number 12. 
uh, Abraham is now getting ready to be commissioned by the Lord. Abraham is the father of Abraham. He is the one that had the twelve. Uh, he had Isaac and Jacob, and Jacob had the twelve patriarchs, which are the twelve tribes of Israel, and that's where God started with a man named Abraham. Abraham was just an idol worshiper. His daddy built idols. They weren't godly people. God came and took an ungodly person and did something with him. Thank God for that, and I like that, and that's our lot. But the Bible says in verse number 1, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of the country from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I'll make thee a great nation. And I'll bless thee, and I'll make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. That's what he said to Abraham. Look at verse 5. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Now, if you read in chapter number 11, I believe it is, you'll find out that Abraham had a brother named Haran, and uh, his son's name was Lot. And that's Abraham's nephew. And Haran had died, or Haran, whatever his name was, died. And now Abraham's taking his nephew and raising him. And so they get out of the place where they're from. God's taking them somewhere else. And listen to me. Listen to this. When God gets on your life, he always takes you where you're at and moves you somewhere else. Not geographically all the time. But spiritually, he does not leave you where he finds you. He moves you. I've not moved Lisa. I've not moved Daisy or Tania or, or, or Hector or, or anybody else that has made decisions in life. God has done that. And, and, and we got to understand that. And so God tells him, you're going to leave. We're going to take you. He takes Lot with him. And so they leave. Now, Lot is with his uncle. And Lot is seeing a man that is blessed of God. God is blessing Abraham big time. Does Abraham make mistakes? He does. In chapter number 12, uh, we see Abraham decides to go down into Egypt uh, for food. And there's a famine in the land. And there's many different ways to look at it that he did right when he went down there because God blessed it down there and, and he had mistakes and all that. But we always look as Egypt as, as the place of the world. So Lot, or Abraham, I mean, takes and decides to get his eyes off God and chase the world. Take up. Chase the world and do what the world wants him to do. And all the mamas are looking at their kids. Huh? It wasn't your kid. Uh, and so, he decides to go down to Egypt. And he goes down there, and he, he, man, he's, the Pharaoh there wants his wife, and he says, well, it's my sister, and almost gives her up, makes a big mistake, and they make it out of their life, and they come back to, to where God had sent them. In chapter number uh, 13, and Abraham went out of Egypt, being his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, even to a place where the tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto a place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham, Abram called on the name of the Lord. His name is not Abraham yet. Verse 5, And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks, herds, and tents. Verse 6, And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so they could not dwell together. Now, it's important that we see that. Uh, and I'm not here to undo anybody's preaching or anything like that. I just take the Bible for what it is, and that speaks to me. doesn't say that Lot was a wicked man. It says the land wasn't able to bear them. Uh, and their herds were great. And boy, the herdsmen, they start arguing with each other. As we uh, read verse number 7, there's strife with the herdsmen. Verse 8, And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. For we are brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. Even thou wilt take the even if thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. And if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Verse ten. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, and thou comest to Zor. And I've heard a lot of messages how Abraham or Lot lifted up his eyes and looked to the world. Whether, whether that is so or not, I don't see it totally in that passage right there, and it's good preaching still. But, remember the land was good to hold them. It was too much. They had too much. So now, God is going to separate these two, which would be what I would call a good church split. 
What do you mean by that? Well, one day maybe the Lord's going to take about 20 of us and we're going to move up out of here and we're going to go start another church and leave the rest of the folks here. And we're going to go and we're going to do something in another place just like we're doing here. And I believe that that might have been God's plan for Lot. For them, that they had all the herds, they had all the cattle, they had all this stuff, and Lot and Abraham could not dwell together, a little bit of strife, and so they split. He looked toward the plain of Jordan, which was well watered, and I understand that, and I'm not taking away from any preaching that we've heard. Then Lot chose him the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and separated themselves from one from another. Verse 11. And verse 12. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Now, I'm just going to put this where we're at right now in our lives. Uh, I moved my family here and, and it was just, it's a wicked place. Exceedingly wicked. Are there nice people? They're absolutely nice people. Are they caught up in sin? Absolutely. Nice or not? Everybody's caught up in the same problem. It's a sin problem. That's what the world has. And the nice people do wrong things. I'm just telling you, I, I don't not against all of them. I'm not saying everybody's a drug addict or a dope dealer. That's not true. We have nice people live in these houses that are here making a life for themselves. They just need the Lord. And, and so I moved my family here. Lot gets ready to go to Sodom and moves his family there. And then he totally drops the ball. And what could have been never happened. And what could have happened did not happen. And what God maybe wanted to do with Lot was take him to a place like Philadelphia and plant him in a little house with his family. And for him to be a man of God and stand for God and do something for God and lead people to God and, and not start acting like the people and not start running with the people and not start living like the people. But living the life of God for them. He had been around Abraham enough. Abraham was a, a blessed man of God. The Bible continually says the Lord blessed Abraham. And Lot was with him all those times. And whether Lot got it or not, I do not know. I've preached this several different ways. I preached that Lot was around him, but he never developed a walk with God himself. And I'm going to preach that at youth camp this year. He rode the, the, Kirk, the, the, the shirt tail of Abraham and never really got a real walk with God. And that's the danger he has. That's the danger he has. That's the danger he has. That's the danger they've got. That's the danger they've got. That they never really develop. And they just ride the coattails. But I'd like to think that they did develop. That Lot did become a spiritual man, Brother Paul. Because the Bible says the land could not hold them and they separated themselves. Abraham was a godly man and Abraham came up with the idea, why don't we just go to the left and you'll go, I'll go to the right. You go that way, I'll go this way and we'll be just fine. And maybe a lot had gotten a walk with God and decided he was going to live for God. And, and he wanted to live for God. And he moves his whole family down into Sodom and Gomorrah that was before it was ever destroyed. And he goes down there and he starts to make a life for himself. Now, I don't want to get into chapter 14, but uh, the kings, these other kings move upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and they, they take all the people, and they take Lot, and Abraham gets his herdsmen together, and Abraham gets his trained servants together that were trained. Well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. I don't want to skip it. Verse 12, chapter 14. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abraham the Hebrew. For he dwelt in the plain of Mamre and the Amorite, uh, uh, plain of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and the brother of Anner, and these were the confederate with Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants. Now, what's that saying, brother Burton? Well, here I want, I want to I want to make a comparison between Abraham and Lot throughout this whole thing. Abraham had servants that had been trained that had, had learned of the Lord and also learned how to fight and, and learned how to do right. and learn. So all he had to do was go to them, hey guys, they've got a lot, they've got this. Here, want you all to arm yourself, we're going to get them. But Lot didn't have any of his servants with him. They stoned Lot and that was it. That's all we hear about. 
Lot had herdsmen. He had cattle. He had a lot of Remember the herdsmen had stripes, so they all separated, and they went to Sodom and Gomorrah. And when that king takes them, all we hear about is Lot being taken, but we hear Abraham arms his trained servants. And they go down and they rescue them. Verse 16, And he brought back all the goods, and also brought back again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the woman also, and the people. So Abram goes out and he rescues them. Hey, we're in chapter 14 of Genesis, Ethel. Abraham rescues them. And he brings them back. And then the, uh, the king of Sodom comes to Abraham and says, I want to give you some stuff. And Abraham says, no, I'm not taking what you got. Hey, we'll take a little bit of food for the men and all that, but I'm not taking what you got because I don't want to make God look bad by taking what you have to offer me. And, and boy, look at the character level of Abraham. And we'll soon look at the character level of Lot. They were together. They probably were spiritual together. They probably had devotions together. God probably blew in there and touched Lot. And that's why God saw him fit to be able to separate him through Abraham's leadership, who was a godly man. And he said, you go to the left, or I'll go to the left, you go to the right, I'll go to the right, whatever. And they leave. And now Lot got in trouble. Abraham comes and rescues him. Whether it was Lot's fault or not, I don't know. I don't really care. Look at verse number 15, or chapter number 15. Look at chapter 14, verse 22. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Now look at the contrast. Abraham, all about God. Still walking with God. Has trained servants. Has trained them in the word of God. Has trained them to fight. Has trained them to live on the land. Has trained them to be what God would have them to be. And when he tried to pay him, he said, no, I don't want your money. I, I lift my hand up to God. It's all I need is God. He, he's my payment. He's everything to me. Now look at chapter number 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in the vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield, and look at it, thy, and, and thy exceeding great reward. Hey, Abraham! Don't worry about the Sodom and Gomorrah deal. Don't worry about that can't fear not. Because I'm your great reward. Yeah. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to bless you. Because you're still walking with me, Abram. You're still doing it with me. And that's important that we understand that. Look at uh, chapter number 17. God is now talking to Abraham, verse 1. And when Abram was 99, 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto Abram and said to him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me and I'll make you something. I'll mature you. I'll help you. Verse 2, I, I outline all these. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall my name any more be called, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. I, I like what my teacher said in Bible college. He said his name was Abram, and then God touched him right there and said, Your name will be Abraham, and breathed on God. And breathed on Abraham. And, and her name was Sarai. And then God breathed on her. Her name would be Sarah. And God did that. I like that. And then just thinking about that, I, I beat a table to death in Bible college when I heard that. Amen. And it was good. Yeah. Verse 6, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. Verse 7, and I will establish my covenant. Verse 8, and I will give unto thee. And God begins to tell Abraham, man, I'm going to do it all. Because Abraham is walking with God. Now, in chapter number 18, we know that the uh, Bible says in verse 1, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and sat in the tent door at the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them in the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. This is God Almighty. By the way, this is Jesus Christ meeting Abraham in that tent door. And there were three angels with him. Uh, or he saw three standing in the door. 
And Abraham goes and gets a, 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 a lamb or a goat or whatever and, and he tells his wife to make some cakes and we're going to feed them. And he washes their feet and, and, and they begin to tell Abraham how he's going to have a child and he's going to take care of all that. But that's not what I want you to look at. What I want you to see is verse number... Verse number 16. And the man rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with him to bring them on the way. Verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? The Lord must have been talking to the angels while he was doing that. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Look at verse 19. It's important where God does this. Right? What he says now. For I know him. And he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. What a blessing for God to say that about him. I mean, think about it now. That's God's testimony about Abraham. I know him. And I know he's going to stand for right. And I know he's going to do right. And I know he's going to make good decisions. I know he's going to command his children. Hey! Can God say that about us tonight? The Lord said, verse 20, Because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is coming to me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? See, Abraham knew Lot was down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, Lord, will you destroy the, 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 the righteous with the wicked? And then Abraham begins to talk with the Lord. Lord, if there's, if, there's, if there's 50 righteous people, will you destroy it? And God says, no, if there's 50, I won't destroy it. Then Abraham suddenly said, well, wait, hold on. If there's 45, will you destroy it? God says, no, no, I, I won't destroy it if there's 45. And, and, and Abraham gets all the way down to 10. Lord, if there's 10, will you not destroy it? God says, no, I won't destroy it. And so Abraham's pretty satisfied with that. You know how that is? Because we, we will see it in a minute. Abraham had a couple of sons, at least two, because it says sons. He had son-in-laws and he had daughters. Two daughters and he had a wife. And, I, and Lot's probably thinking, well, man, Abraham. Man, I remember how he would preach and when we were out on the plains and, man, he'd pray. And, and I know he loved the Lord. I know that's why God separated us. I know he ran into some trouble with the king of Sodom. That wasn't his fault. We rescued him. But I know he's down there. And I, at first, I like what Brother Paul said, and he told me this just today, I think, we talked about it. He said, you know, Abraham thought, God thought maybe, Abraham thought that Lot had led some people to Christ because there's probably at least 50 down there. Remember, his herdsmen were down there. Uh, and who knows what happened to them? Were they saved? I don't know. But he says, if there's 45, will you not destroy Simon and Gomorrah? If there's 40, 35, 30, whatever he goes down, he gets to 10. And Abraham said, man, surely there's 10 down there that are saved people. Surely, surely Lot is down there living for God amongst them. Surely. Look at verse number 19. Now the angels are going down to, to talk to Lot. There's two of them. And the, there came two angels to Sodom at evening. Means at evening time. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Now, now I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But Lot's sitting there. The angels come in. And Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself his face towards the ground. He said, Behold now my lords, turn in I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and you shall rise up early and go on your way. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house and made them, he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread and did eat. Now here's what I think was happening with Lot. They came down there and Lot bought I can't believe they're here and they're going to see what I've really been doing with my life. And I'm not, I'm not stood like I was supposed to. Listen to me, folks. People that don't stand for Christ aren't excited about it. They know they should have stood for Christ. When I fail Christ and fail to stand for Him in front of somebody, I'm a loser in myself. And I think, man, I should have stood for Him. 
When he saw a man, he's like, hey, hey, God, come on to my house. Come on, let's, let's, let's go to my house. He knew what was going on in Sodom. And he knew that he didn't have a testimony there, and he was just letting it go on. And, and they said, no, no, we're just going to buy him the street. And I believe they just did that to see what he was doing. God, they already knew what was going on, and angels move at the speed of light. And so they're, they're moving. They, 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 you know, it's no, no big deal. They knew what was going on. And the Bible says, and he pressed on them greatly. Guys, no, you can't stay out in the street. Just come to my house. I'll make you a beast, and I'm going to wash your feet. I want you to get inside, God. Just come on, get inside. Hurry in the morning inside. So that they don't see what's going on outside. And how he's allowed that to happen. He pressed on them greatly and he turned in unto them and entered the house and made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, and all the people from every quarter. So now, listen to me now. You've got old men... Young men and everybody from Sodom, they've, they've circled Lot's house. They've circled it. They want, they want to do something here. And, and I'm not going to tell it to you. I'll just let the Bible tell you what it's going to do. I, I'll, make it, I'll tell you about it. Hold on. And they called him Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. So what was going on, Brother Burton? Homosexual predators were all around that house. They wanted to have homosexual uh, uh, activity with those men. Those angels, they thought they were just men. And, and they, Lot, send them out. We want to know them. Now Lot's thinking, what in the world? He, 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 and, and listen to me. Look what, look what Lot says. And Lot went out at the door under them and shut the door after him. Now, uh, this may not be good. This may be good. I don't know. Uh, uh, he's in there with the angels. Oh, no, no. I'll, I'll handle this, guys. Don't worry about that. They, they, you know, don't worry about that. And uh, Let me just go outside. And he shuts the door quick. Guys, guys, leave him alone. Leave him alone. The, the, and, and then he starts. Look what he says next. So why do you keep walking down there? I don't know. I'm very nervous. And he said, I pray you... Brethren. Huh. That's pretty interesting. He lives with ungodly people. You know, you understand this? I may make a mistake every now and then and call somebody a brother that's not a brother. But when I do, I realize it immediately. That I just called that man a brother. I, I used to call your dad Brother Rivera. Now I can't. But I used to call him Brother Rivera and I think, well, you know, but I didn't, didn't correct myself with him and say, no, no, brother, not, not Brother Rivera. Sorry about that. But bro, he's like, hey, Brethren, brothers, friends. That's what he, how he's talking to these homosexual men that are after these angels. Behold, now I have two daughters. Oh my. Which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and you can do what's good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under my, the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. And, and they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot. And they came near to break the door. What is that? He'll be a judge. Remember he's sitting in the gate? You know what Lot did when he went down there? He sat in the gate and he judged people for what they were doing right and wrong. He said, no, no, that, that's wicked. You shouldn't be doing that. And he was one of the judges in that city. But the whole time, Lot was not living for God. He was a hypocrite. And that's what they're calling him in that verse. Man, he was here to judge us, and he's a hypocrite. Let's get him. Because he doesn't even live a good life. And, and Lot wasn't living a godly life in that house. Lot, hey, Lot went there and blew it. And now he's ready to give his daughters up. I wouldn't give my kids up to anybody. We will just go down in flames before that ever happens. It will flames for flames for my guns to start with. We put, we're going to go down with a fight. Never given them. That, that's amazing that he would want to do that. And now they're going to deal with him. Look verse 10. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. Angels grabbed them. 
And they smote the men that were at the door of the house of blindness, and small and great, and they were wearied themselves to find the door. All these men are made blind now. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides? As far as I can tell, Lot says, Son-in-law, or no, they say, Son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy it, because the crimes wax and great. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy it. And they seemed as one who mocked unto his sons-in-law, and they made fun of him. They didn't believe him. Hey, listen to me. Lot wasn't living for the Lord, folks. Okay? He never was living for the Lord. But Paul, he might have started strong down there, but at this point, he's not living for the Lord. Now the Lord comes to him and he goes to him and says, you know, let's go. we got to go. And he had no testimony. They didn't believe him. They thought he was weird. They thought something was wrong with him. They had no reason to believe him because he was not a godly man at this time in his life. He had lost his testimony. And he, he, he basically sent all of Sodom and Gomorrah to hell. Because he lost his testimony. He sent his sons to hell, that's for sure. He became his grand his grandchildren's father. They escaped the city. God destroyed the city. And he his daughters get them drunk because they think the world is over. And Lot has babies with his own daughters. They become the Moabites. And that becomes a problem throughout the history of the world. Those those children. And and and, and Lot lost his testimony right in the beginning. The angels tell him to take your family, take everybody out of there, and get out. Now, I want to preach the loss of Lot. Number one, I want you to understand the depravity of Lot. Verses 4 through 11, man, it was shocking how far he had went. Man, he had just completely lost it. He probably was a godly man when they separated. I understand he saw the plains, and I understand all that, but I don't find anywhere in the Bible where Lot was a wicked man. At that point in his life. And so uh, he, he separates and he goes down there. God separates him with Abraham. Abraham's got God's blessings on him. God's moving with him. And God would have still moved with Lot. And have been another good story to move with Lot. And would have blessed Lot. And would have kept Lot. And would have done for Lot. And would have protected Lot. And would have lived with Lot. And would have helped Lot. And would have helped Lot to help others. Like he did on Abraham's side. Abraham, everything he did was blessed. And so he goes down there, man, and he just sinks so low in depravity. He's not living for the Lord. I mean, he, 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 you know, and, and all I can do is compare it to our lives here. Moving to Philadelphia, the inner city, right here where I live. Uh, I'm not from here. And so this is probably the most ungodly place I've ever seen in my life or lived, at least lived in my life. Uh, because of all the sin that's on the outside and all the craziness that's going on, everything that's in front of us. And, and uh, you know, uh, what would you think about, Pastor, if you saw me sitting over here in the ballpark with a, uh, a cigar wrapper rolling up something and, and with my pants hanging off my rear end and out there playing and, and rocking around and having fun? What would you think? He said, well, man, Pastor's lost it. He's lost it. And you wouldn't believe me anymore. And if I just went off the deep end, imagine if I just went off the deep end, I just lived here the rest of my life, and, you, and I just never came back to this church, and you saw me over there, and you think, man, I mean, what, what a loss that would be for the Lord, for us, for everybody, for my family. That's what Lot did. He went down there, man, he blew it. And God had to destroy it, not because of Lot. And I want you to understand that, and I'm, I'm getting somewhere very quickly here. Lot had chosen a godless, deprived environment, depraved environment to live in. Lot made his home with the depraved and the wicked, becoming one of them. What a, what a tragedy. He didn't have to become them. He could have stood strong. We, we, we have no problem living right there and standing strong for God with or without a church. Because God is our rock. And He is my exceeding great reward. And He's going to take care of us. And I do need church. I do need the Bible. And I do need that to live. And, and Lot could have established all that down there. And He did it. 
Well, I knew these people. They were his day-to-day -day friends, his acquaintances, his neighbors, his business associates. He had lived among them. And he'd been there too long with the world. And he had no testimony before them. And in their minds, he was just like one of them. And he could have saved them. And he could have led them all to God. Folks, I'm just telling you, we live in a depraved world, but we don't have to be depraved. Yeah. And we don't have to be like that. And I'm not knocking anybody that's a sinner without God and does not know any better. They are supposed to act like they're acting. It's just the way it's supposed to be. Without God, you will act like that. But it's our job to say, you know, God's done something for me. I mean, you know, and, and we gotta we gotta start giving that to people. Man, you know, I just want to tell you what he did for me. He helped me. And he did something for me. And maybe you ought to come and, and let's see if God can do something for you. And, and, and listen, Lot didn't do that. So when it was time to go, his sons-in-law's laughed him to scorn. Uh, his daughters uh, got out of there and lived in sin. And, and the mama was killed because she looked back and didn't listen to what God told her. So Lot's depravity. And number two, Lot had become consumed with selfishness and compromise. Man, he didn't care about his daughters, Brother Paul. This is a true story in the Bible now. He didn't care about his kids. Why, Brother Bert? I don't know. All I can think is that at one point when he separated from Abraham, he had to have been strong. I believe that. I, I don't see anything that would contradict what I'm telling you in the Bible. And he had the herdsmen and he had all this stuff and he went down there and he slowly just blended in and became one of them. Folks, that's why we don't talk like them. That's why we don't watch what the world watches. That's why we don't wear what the world wears. It's the way, you know, the world wears what you wear, Brother Burton. Well, I'm just telling you, I'm talking about the Hollywood crowd. Yeah. The, the, the clothesless generation, men and women. I'm talking about, uh, that's why we don't talk like that. That's why we don't listen to that music. Yo, know, that music will ruin you. That's it will absolutely right. ruin you. I drove around in cars with guns listening to all that junk. Uh, and it will ruin your life and it will ruin your kids' life. Right, and, and, and I'm afraid some of our kids, uh, uh, oh, we were sitting in a, a seafood restaurant with all our teenagers and I never even heard the song, but our kids were all singing it and proud to be singing it. And, and, and I'm just thinking, I want to kill them all. And Kara's like, they're just teenagers, don't worry about it. And I'm like, well, that makes me sick that they know those songs like that. That ungodly nastiness. That was, and they weren't cussing, but it wasn't good songs. And, 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 and so, what, what's happening there, Brother Burton? Well, maybe we're blending in a little too much. And maybe if we're not careful, man, well, we'll lose them. And, and, and man, it's time to fight. Lot could have fought for his kids. He could have fought for his family and said, No! No! I'm going to fight for these kids. And, and I don't get, listen, folks, I don't want you to go off the deep end. And I don't want to see you do it. And I'll warn you. And you already know that. Some of you like when I warn you. Some of you don't want me to warn you anymore. But I'll continue to do that because I'm the pastor of the flock. Uh, and, but, but they're not going and they'll know why you went. Because I have to keep it real with my kids. Because I did not move here and lose them. Right. I'm not a pastor to lose them. They're first and foremost in my life. But then the church is right after that. My family and the church. Amen. And you're like family and we're, you guys are lumped in with my kids to me. Man, I love you kids and love you as much as I love my kids sometimes. And man, maybe we got to be careful not to blend in because that's, it's the same outcome for all of us. Right. And, and so Lot blew it and, and messed it up and, and should have done better. And it was horrible, unbelieving nastiness, the hypocritical life that he had there. Uh, he sat in the gate judging people, reproving citizens of Sodom for their injustices. And while uh, he was living a compromised worldly life. Now take the Bibles and turn to 2 Peter chapter number 2 and we're going to get out of here. 2 Peter chapter number 2. I just want to show you something really quickly. Carlos, you a LeBron fan? I am too. Yeah. 2 Peter chapter number 2 and verse number 6. Verse number six. God is now telling us here how He'll... Listen to me. This context of the Scripture is God will deliver the righteous. He'll destroy the wicked, but He'll save the righteous. 
Now look at it, verse 6. And turn to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with the overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. Now, folks, you pray for America, because eventually God will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah for what is happening in our country today with this uh, wicked, sinful generation. Not just the Sodomites, but everything that is going on. But he says in verse number 7, And delivered just Lot. Just Lot, which means he was a saved man. And God saved Lot and did not destroy him because he loved him. And that's a blessing that God saved Lot. But look what it says. Vexed with a filthy conversation of the wicked. Conversation there is a manner of life, his lifestyle. He delivered just Lot, but he was vexed with a filthy lifestyle of the wicked people. Because he went down there and, 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 and he, 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 he got in with them and he, he did some things he should not have done. No. He shouldn't have. Verse number... A, for the righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Think about the verse now. Don't go to sleep on me. For the righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Listen to that music. Watching that TV. You mark it down. Now, folks, I don't want to be right. But I already know I will be right. It'll take them. You'll lose them. Lose nothing, nothing drives a Christian backwards more than ungodly music. Right. And, and, and I'm just saying, you did why? Because it's always pumping through it. I haven't listened to ungodly music in 12 years uh, and, and on, uh, on purpose. But man, I know every word to every song there is. I mean, I know them like the back of my hand. I can think of a song right now. I picture myself places. It, it, it really transformed my life. And I'll never get rid of that. For the righteous man dwelling among them in sin and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, how to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. He's saying, God saying, look, I delivered him. Now, Lot had a powerless testimony after that. He was warned of the angels the same as family and he couldn't do it. He warned his family but was ridiculed and mocked. They didn't believe his message. They didn't, he didn't have a personal testimony. There was no difference between his lives and the world's lives. He failed uh, to the point of his family, his children, and getting them to God. He miserably failed. I'm looking for something. He failed because he bended and blended rather than stood and stuck. I'm just telling you. Is that what you was trying to find us? Yeah. Like, man, I was sitting there reading my Bible and I thought, man, he bended and blended. And he should have stood and stuck. Now, folks, I don't think any of us are on the, or where Lot is. Or we're not ended up at this point in our life. But maybe we should tighten some things up in our life. He said, well, if we, if we, if we don't need to watch TV, don't need to do some music, they have such a boring life. No, why don't you sit down with them and, and, and take the place of the TV and, and, uh, and don't let the TV watch our kids. My wife hates that TV, wishes we never had it in the living room. Uh, but, but you're not going to come into my house and me just be sitting in front of it with my family running around. We'll watch it late at night and every now in the morning, in the morning for the news and at night for the news. And tonight we'll go home and watch a basketball game together. 
But I'm just telling you, Lot should have been a hero, and he became a zero. And he is the reason Sodom and Gomorrah fell. I believe that 100%, Brother Paul. He had all those herdsmen that weren't trained, they didn't know how to do right, and they went down there and blew it. And so, I don't want us, this is a preventive message, and this is for everybody. The best of the best Christians and men and women of God have went off the deep end at some point and different times in this nation. So I'm not above it. He's not above it. They're not above it. Nobody's above it. But if we're not careful to shut stuff down in the beginning instead of allowing it and allowing it and allowing it, God told them to destroy the Canaanites. And you've heard me say this before. Destroy all the Canaanites. Kill them all. And the Bible says they quit fighting because they had chariots of iron. They got tired of fighting them, so they let them live amongst them. And it wrecked their lives even today. Yeah, 2,000, 3,000 years later, the Canaanites still disturb everybody. And, and so I'm just telling you, maybe you need to do some uh, reckoning in your life and, and say, Lord, is there anything? Anything I need to tighten up? And I'm just telling you, it doesn't have to be music and, and, and TV. Lord willing, man, we're past that. We've got to grow. And we've got to grow. Uh, you know, you ought to be able to take your kid's telephone at any time and look at it and go through everything they got. When they get nervous, you ought to not give it back to them ever again. My wife picks my phone up all the time, and it's like it's like social media to her, though. She likes to see what I'm saying to people. I'm worried if I'm saying the wrong things, texting me. Not worried, you know, having them all color. I'm not worried about that. Uh, but Paul can pick my phone up. I shouldn't worry that something's going to pop up. But think about our kids. Some of our kids, would they? I mean, they're you kids. Do you want your mom to have your phone? But I'm just telling you, we got to tighten up, okay? And, and man, the Lord wants to do something. And if you get derailed, Lisa Cruz, if you get derailed, the church hurts because of it. And it doesn't go as far as it would have went because a member, a part of the, the, the body is gone. And that's for any of us. When part of the body leaves, it's, it, it has to be replaced. And it takes time. And God wants to do something with us. And so David blew it. And he hurt the cause of Christ to the heathen enemies. And Lot blew it. And the whole place was destroyed. He lost his whole family and his testimony and everything. But Abraham stuck with God and God blessed him. Big time. And Abraham's life will always go down in history. One of the greatest lives ever. And the Abrahamic covenant is, a, is an unconditional covenant that God gave us. That He'll always bless us and He'll always be in that thing with Israel and us. It, it's unconditional. God has done it and God is doing it. And God wants to do it. And listen, we've just got to get in with Him. And we've got to make sure we tighten up, man. So, well, Bert, do you need to tighten up? Well, I'm going to ask God where I need to tighten up. The message preached to me too. Uh, if I don't get preached to by myself, then I'm in trouble. I need the Word of God. And so let's pray right now. Let's ask the Lord to help us. You come to the altar if you'd like to. If you're in here tonight and you're not saved and you don't know the Lord, maybe God speaks to you and you need to get saved. Maybe you'd say, man, I'm, I need to get saved. Well, if that's you, you ought to step out and come down to this altar and let us take a Bible and show you how you can know for sure that God is your Savior. Maybe you just need to do business with Him. Why don't you step out and come down to the altar and talk to the Lord as the piano begins to play. Heavenly Father.